So we're doing some rod run prep. We've decided to take the blue truck to tow with this time. We usually take the 7.3, but eh, we're gonna take the blue truck because it's more rod run appropriate. It's also got our name on it and it's very recognizable. So this thing, the last time I drove it to Kentucky, it was randomly losing voltage. Something was shorting out. The headlights were cutting on and off. So I pulled the cluster out and found 47 wires that were left like dangling from the cluster install that were naked but possibly shorting out. So I taped up all those. I put a new headlight switch in because this one looks sketchy. It looks melted right here and then the little rheostat for the dash lights is corroded. So I changed it. It was cheap insurance. So I'm also going to fix the radio because I'm tired of not having a radio in this truck. It worked real nice and then it failed. So, probably gonna, also due to the wiring, maybe. Yeah, this wiring and this that. This is this is a combination of get you off the side of the road 17 times, or let's wire a radio up in a Goodwill parking lot. And sketchy speakers we found in Goodwill and trash like that, and it just it culminated into a problem, which just never left me stranded. But just stuff that we've like needed to yeah. sto sort out, and we've just put it off and put it off and put it off and. So now we're doing it. Do <laughs> you want to talk about your cluster? You can show a little bit of it. Yeah, it's got an Intellitronics cluster. It's digital. It just screws to the back of the old cluster. There's a video on that a couple of years back if you want to check out that. There's a video on this whole truck. Yeah. Whether we just talked about it, the build and stuff. And the story. We're going to put it all back in. Maybe I'll actually put all the screws in it too. None of this stuff even had screws in it. There was like two screws in the cluster and one screw in the tram. It's Saturday, so we have, we don't work on Sunday or do anything on Sunday other than just like church and, and rest and, and plunder out. around. Um, so we have Monday and Tuesday and that's it. Wednesday we're leaving. Yep. While he's been working on maintenance on the blue truck, I've been working on polishing up this Columbia Tusum. I gave it a bath. Um, I've been working on getting the chrome, but you can see just a little bit shinier. I did the front fender, the handlebar, did the sprockets. But our goal is to ride this around Rod Run. He got new wheels, our new tires, so we'll put those on a little bit. So I'm working on the Columbia Tusum. Brittany is polishing it. And I found a crack in the chain. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but I was a it trying to free it up and I saw that. So we're going to get new chains. will press apart. It's 1049. This is one of the earliest times that we've got out of here. Trucks loaded. Got our bicycles. And we've got the Rambler.
Keep winding Mountain Road for the next 35 miles. Oh, there's a... Whatever that thing I yelled. Hopefully it stays there. It's kind of wobbly. That one got two ear tags. We made it to Pigeon Forks. It's Wednesday. We've never been up on a Wednesday before, so this is our first time that we've ever been up here ever. And we've been going for years now. Um, the strip is kind of dead at the moment. There's a lot of parking places, which is great. I'll flip it around and show you guys. Well, there's not currently parking places oh, right yeah. here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love how I say that. They're, it's full, but... No, there's a couple right there. Yeah. In the wild. That is the ugliest thing. No, we have to have one. We have to wrap it rusty. We are not having one of those. So we went to the, uh, we're at the island parking right now. We never did this before, but supposedly you can get trailer parking, show passes to go inside the show, and what was it? Oh, a car corral. Um, for eighty-five dollars, which we usually spend a whole <laughs> lot to just park the trailer. Seventy-five to park. The seventy-five trailer. to park the trailer on the backwoods, not backwoods, back roads. Backwoods, <laughs> backwoods trailer parking. <laughs> backwoods. <laughs> so we're gonna try this out and see if <coughs> all that information is correct, and if it is, that'll save us some money. Um, but we're gonna go hop in line and. We should have parked over here. We made it inside the show area. Daniel is at this tent picking up all the credentials and stuff. There's the truck, the Rambler, and there's one of the cyber trucks. Check that out. Our security will park you. Lock and secure your load. See their security people yet. I'm just gonna go drive around until I find somebody. <laughs> somebody officially looking? We didn't bring a block of wood to put under the jack, and it says that you have to do that. Uh -oh. We might put our trailer ramp under the jack. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I guess they don't want to hurt the bricks. Yeah, because it's got pavers. Was easy and painless. Ramblers unloaded. We didn't have to do it in the mud, so that's a win. Oh, that feels weird driving on these like paver things. Don't know how long I can record for because I can't drive a stick shift and uh, change gears holding the camera. This will be the first time the Ramblers sat in traffic or did any kind of traffic stuff. I'm back again. Oops, I may have to put it in second. I don't know if it's going to take third. But we're parking lot cruising now to find a spot. Uh, Corey and Hannah set up around this place called the Buzz Bull. We didn't see any parking places there, but we did see some in front of this fantasy golf um, area. So we're going to try to park there. Usually these places are pretty high traffic areas. I'm killing Daniel's clutch at the moment. Okay, there we go. Put it in second. Man, when we drove by earlier, this was like not full and now it's filled up. And this guy. Come on, guy. Come on. Okay. Do so you want to talk about what we're doing? Or what we did today? Or anything? So today we uh, ditched our Cadillac that we made our Rod Run prep video about because Park went out in the trans and 
call me crazy. I don't know. The parking pole broke. Literal, literal park. Yeah. Yeah. The only time I've ever seen park go out on a transmission. But it doesn't work. It almost ran over John and... Actually, I wasn't over there when that happened. But anyway, we brought the Rambler and the blue truck. So we're here. We came. We're having fun. Cadillac's at home. We're going to fix it when we get back. It's still for sale if anybody, you know, wants it. And it will be fixed. <laughs> and then we also picked up Patrick. <laughs> and wants us to do a burnout. I'm not doing a <laughs> <laughs> So when you're at Rod Run, a lot of people on the strip, like, get just as excited to see the cars. And a lot of the little kids are now trained to say, do a burnout. Hello. Which is followed by, get a ticket from Pigeon Forge's finest police. It's like $86. It's, yeah, it's 86 something. bucks. Or yeah. The cops up here are really cool if you like, don't be an idiot. There's just some center lines. Yeah. So, we have been coming up here for years and have not been idiots and therefore have not been hassled. They're just out here trying to keep everybody safe. So, if you do burn out, she will get a ticket. It will cost you 86 bucks. Or, or more. more, depending on how rude you are. Yeah. There she is in all her glory. It is ice cream cone. It's for sale. This is what happens when you're bad at rod run. <laughs> you get shoved in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Daniel's trying to get the door, the tailgate to open. <laughs> we need to unload all of our stuff and our shirts and everything and I accidentally messed it up, so he had to crawl back there and he's trying to get it undone. It ended up in the same spot. <laughs> Daniel, you're in the same spot. He said I, he said I can't see. Do y'all want to put the hood down? That's looking better. Matter. Yeah. Yeah, that's much better. Really? Oh, you're long for the ride, then. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> it's sloppy. Alright, let's All right. fast as just go. Alright. I'm telling you, <laughs> The brakes don't really work. The pedal back. <laughs> oh, we're going to go over the speed bump. Oh, my God. Ouch. Get it, get it, get it, get it. <laughs> All right, Brittany. Come on, Brittany, you got it done. Y'all mastered the twosome. Now, three, two, one, get out of here. I'm just gonna stand here and catch you on the way back. <laughs> what up, guys and gals? Down here kicking it. Y'all need to come pigeon forward. Rod run. It's amazing time. Amazing people. You will have a blast, I promise you. So come on down. Enjoy it one year. It's awesome. Here they come.
So how was it? Not too bad. Not near as bad as it was in my yard. Mm. We tried this in the yard and it was sketch. <laughs> this was not too bad. Yeah. Be getting comments? No. No, no, no comments. <laughs> We stopped by the show at the Lecontle Center. These cars are super nice, but not really our style. We typically just go for the outside swap meet where we are able to pick up tools that we need for the shop. Uh, they're usually a whole lot cheaper here. So twice a year we'll go and pick up tools and then see if there's anything elsewise that we need from any of the other vendors. All these cars are like works of art. They are super beautiful, great to look at, enjoy looking at them. Um, we will just probably never have anything this nice. We're resurrected garage, not restoration garage. But they sure are nice to look at. Yesterday we were trying to move the Rambler and we noticed that it didn't really like want to go and we were like, that's weird. And then we checked the gas and there was no gas in it. <laughs> so we went to the store and got some gas in our boat tank. We forgot our other one. So if we got to move the car, at least we can get to a gas station without it dying in the middle of a whatever. We are going to head down and out of Pigeon Forge, down the mountain to go check out uh, Clemens. I guess it's technically up the mountain from this point. To go check out Clemens Dome. Hopefully it's a clear day up there. They've got a really cool observation tower. It's a one mile hike or less. It's not bad. It's just strenuous. We're going to go check that out. Since it's a super hot day here, we figured it might be a nice uh, refreshing thing to do. At 6,643 feet, Clemens Dome is the highest point in the Smokies. The observation tower offers 360 degree views of the mountains and on a clear day you can see over a hundred miles. There's a parking lot. That's still a long way away. You're almost there. Let me take a straight shot. We couldn't decide between this or the Rambler, but decided that it probably wasn't the best to uh, <laughs> test drive the Rambler Yeah, here. we don't trust the Rambler because I've only drove it like a few minutes. And this is 6,600 feet of elevation up here. People in Colorado are like, what are y'all talking about? Those are little mole hills. <laughs> so did you have any car problems? No. 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 My oil pressure center unit fails randomly and says I have no oil pressure. But I know it's just the center unit, so I'm going to ignore that. It's a beautiful trolley. We just passed the aquarium, but we're not going to the aquarium. We're going to this super sketchy like road that we found several years ago. It's super twisty. Super steep. We got some switchbacks. Switchbacks, but it's got a great view at the top. It's a good thing we're in a sports car. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. You all love that with a slight load, this thing sounds like it's knocking. Yeah. Like, I don't know what that is. It's been doing that for years. If it was a ride bearing or something, they would have done come apart. Oh, yeah. That's a lemon right there, though. Yeah. Beautiful view, though. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't even have to check, like, Google Maps for traffic. You could just look. Yeah, you could just observe. Or you could just know that you live in Gatlinburg and traffic sucks. Yeah. Hey! 
I can't stop helping. I'm dedicated. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to slow down. Double biceps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was parking places over here. Oh, uh, really? Brandy, go get the truck. No. You got a KFC bucket. I didn't know where you were going to go with that, but I like it. Have a good one. <laughs> You're in the momento. Yeah, don't work like that, guys. You gotta rock and roll with it. <laughs> hey. Hi. You guys look like you do enjoy that? No. It's time for a new one. So we just got out of the ice cream shop. Come back here. <laughs> what did we get? I got peanut butter and chocolate. It's called a tiger stripe. And I got banana with Oreos. Oh yeah. It's very good. <laughs> Getting on? It's Friday morning. We are taking out the Rambler. We took it out last night out of its parking place, drove it around for what, probably like 10, 20 minutes. Yeah. Or so. Is that seat not bolted down? <laughs> oh, nope. We're good. It's fine. <laughs> I forgot to bolt the seats down. <laughs> Oopsies. It's a good thing we're out in like a hilly city. Or yeah. Thunder works. I just don't know if the, the fuel gauge don't work because I put $30 worth in it last night. What, how much? 30 Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, no, really. <laughs> uh, no, no, I didn't want it to run out. <laughs> okay. So we went out to breakfast this morning, and this guy's parked here. He's looking for offers. He's super long, a bunch of wiper. Clean interior. Has cameras on the outside, that's wild. Brand new tag. And then you have my little Rambler. So I usually go and bike the Greenway. Um, try to every rod run. It's just something I like to do because it's a pretty safe uh, area to bike. 
And also there's a great view of the river and you also get to see cool cars on the stretch. I'm not sure how far we're gonna go today, but it starts at Patriot Park near the old mill and then it goes all the way to this farm over here. I had a nice six mile bike ride on the Greenway. After I got done on the Greenway, I headed over to cruise the strip on my own. Sorry for the camera angle. I'll have to work on that for next time. But I really enjoy cruising around my own and being able to stop and take pictures. It's a cute little thing. Okay, I know this is a late model vehicle. We don't usually do late model vehicles, but you've got to appreciate it for what it is. It is a Saab. So our little black car is a Saab. We did not make many of these. You don't ever see the SUVs um, ever. Well, it's 4,500 bucks for it. I'm sure you guys can't see the inside. Typical Saab looking interior. What makes this one cool is that it has the quirks of a Saab with the 5.3 V8 of the SS Trailblazer. Basically these are pretty much similar to the Chevy SS Trailblazer, just Saab's version of that. This is Speedy Cop's Camaro. He just has got it back. I think that he drove cross country to go get it. He sold it somewhere out in California. Somebody had it and he just recently has got it. He also has the flying fishbowl and the trippy hippie van, if you want to check that out. He rode this in the 24 Hours of Lemons. Um, I'm trying to think, he has something else. I can't think of what it is. Oh, the Cessna airplane. That's the other big one, so. so I have no idea what exactly this thing is, other than it's really quirky. Um, low key, kind of like that. It's very different. Yeah, apparently did hot rod power tour at some point in time because he has a sticker on the thing I bet this is a sight to see on the power tour Don't be killing my car! I found you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got picked up for you though. I know. Well, I I, they were point four, and like you're point three. I can make it twist three. up, but I'm kind of scared. I'll break something. Oh, well, I'm do that. So we. This is the first time we've ever loaded. or actually had passengers in the car. Is that me, and Daniel? <laughs> Killed it. Da oh, no! <laughs> Oh no! I think we're losing gas. Uh oh. It's snowing now. And I think we're out now. <laughs> no. It's just going to take a lot of air, man. Come on! Daniel, we flooded it. For? We bowled the fuel. You going to fish it over there? Yeah. Uh, Y'all's going too slow. Why don't you let me and uh, Marcus? All right, we'll rock you, and roll. Let's fish it over there. Okay. <laughs> says it's hot. Uh -oh. <laughs> That's good. It's all on you. It's good. <laughs> well, that was great until I jumped in. It was my fault. <laughs> What is it? <laughs> it all was great until so I jumped oh, in. Oh, that bent hose. Yeah. We were five passengers deep. That was one. Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was the only time you got in. I know. It's my fault. 
one. Couldn't handle me. It said, ew. <laughs> This is hot. We have leakage. Boop. You got a leak in the radiator. Where? Right top. Okay. <laughs> He's a warrior. He's got gas in the hood. And he don't look flooded. It smells flooded. It smells flooded. I think I lost fire. Well, well I got hold it. It's got enough fire to do that. I think it lost. It's got a resistor on it, and I was questioning if that resistor was going to be any good or not. This is our answer. Yeah, I'm about to bypass it. Mechanical failure <laughs> at its finest. Brittany, run to the park store. That's a long ways. I'd run back and then get my bike on. And then, woo! Hey guys, not being a note at all or anything, I'm sitting right back here. You're flooded, man. It's got I, no spark. It can't burn the fuel. I pulled the coal wire and held it over here. It's got no spark. I was yeah. going to say, hold the pedal all the way to the floor. Yeah, I was doing that. That's, that's what I thought was wrong with it too. Okay. I just I want to let you know we can smell yeah. it back here. I appreciate yeah. it. Right. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. What kind of screwed up points is this? Turn the switch. Leave the it's the switch on. Fine. Um. No sparkles. Got no more lines than they call What? Does it need a new uh, loader button? Uh, I'm not sure. You said the points are not that stuff what in here. What did you just say? Loader. Give her some gas now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna put the resistor back. Come on, baby. What'd you say? Come on, baby. Alright, here we go again. Round two. That's the emergency brake cable. The emergency brake's off, but it's on right now because I'm stuck, but it's a bit off. But it's smoking? Yeah, like it. Come on, girl. <laughs> Clear up and go. You gotta get the fuel out of You gotta get the fuel back out. We're about to take this back to the room and then fix it up there. Or our zone, just down the room. I don't, I don't wanna go over there. there. Huh? I don't know if it'll make it there. I know from I know from messing with it that, that when I get in the throttle hard the sparks breaking down. It's going away. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the coal's hot and the it's points the, are probably the coal is probably the problem. Shot. Yeah. So we're gonna go uh, swap vehicles. Just say I should have put a coal on it before well, we brought it. How many new park store things have I installed that hadn't worked? A lot, but well. So whenever we started, it must work. <laughs> you right. called it what? I never doubted. I said I called it whenever we started, no spark. Whenever it smelled it flooded and wasn't great. Yeah. <coughs> Here we go. Oh, people. Pretty smooth. I wasn't stopping. Uh oh. Come on. Uh -oh. Lower gear. Hey. <laughs> it sounds like a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I felt like one too. This person's probably like, wow. <laughs> These people in their old stuff. Maybe we should pay a lower gear in the first place. They likes that. Oh, we got the cruise last time then we right? save our twenty dollars. Oh my god almighty, we're going to get a cruise. <laughs> <laughs> my Wait. goal is to either have this car completely right when it leaves here or sell it. 
Do I go swing it around or do I try to back it in? Ooh. Well, if you back it in, we're gonna have a massive gas dump it down oh, there. Oh, that's hill. a good point. <laughs> you can be anything in 2024. Uh, <laughs> Today Daniel, you what do you do? I might need a push. Can we? <laughs> push down there. I told you that key was got worse. Oh, uh, we're good. You get it going. It. Get it going. You got to get it revved up a little bit. It couldn't be revved. <laughs> and that is how you milk a car and get it back. <laughs> So we went to the parts store in search of ignition parts. What happened was the coal shorted and it got hot and quit working. I guess it shorted. It got the points hot. So we got a coal from AutoZone and then we walked across the parking lot to O'Reilly's and they successfully ordered us a set of points and a condenser and they had plugs on the shelf also. So we got those things and then we went back to the car and installed all those parts. Didn't get any of this stuff before we left because one, the car was running fine. And, you know, I'm not going to fix stuff if it's not broke. So, we put the stuff on. This was a pretty minor repair in the grand scheme of things. We really haven't had to do much to this car. You know, it's been sitting for 15 or 20 years. We don't really know exactly how long, but a long time. And for this to be all that happened and sitting in rod run traffic and, you know, working the bugs out, we drove the thing home. I mean, it's pretty good. So, I'm not going to complain about it. This has been a pretty solid car. So you want to say what you're doing real quick? Like short? We're changing plugs. And points. And a leaky vacuum hose. I'm sorry. What? Could <laughs> <laughs> you say a little? We're changing plugs. <laughs> points. <laughs> well, she said to let her know what we were doing. I don't understand. Can you need this? I mean, yeah. you know, a little bit more like, you know. <laughs> Since. Elaborate or. turd going. Or whatever. Okay. So we're changing the plugs and the points. We already put the coal on and we also changed a leaky vacuum hose. <gasps> Alrighty, we are rolling out to go get dinner on a beautiful Friday night. Hopefully the Ramper cooperates. Second trip. Yeah, second trip out. It should be happy. It's got new points, a new condenser. Is that right? Condenser. Yeah. Uh, points, spark condenser, plugs, spark plugs. And a resistor. On. And a vacuum hose. Vacuum yeah. hose, and y'all had a fuse too, didn't you? Yeah, that was just for the cluster. It still doesn't work. Hey, buddy. up and go back like just straighten your wheels and go back a little further yeah yeah, yeah no. right there in that state yeah now I go back
Well, it's Sunday. We are heading out of here. It's noon. Um, so we got to go get just picking up the truck. And then we're going to take the truck and then go get the trailer. And then I think we're going to drive a separate over the mountain. One of the keys to getting around up here is to park in Lutzer and know your like back roads because if you're stopped in traffic or if you're running hot or you're having vehicle issues like you definitely want to get off the strip as like as soon as possible. And yes we really did use our ramps as a chop block. We were supposed to have a wood block um, and we usually carry one with us but we didn't have one in the truck this go around. So we improvised and used our ramps. We didn't figure anybody would want our crusty ramps. They've been fixed and welded on and bent so many times. We really need new ones, but we're just working with what we have. The same thing applies to our trailer in the parking lot. This was the crustiest trailer, but this car trailer has hauled so many things for us. We've been really blessed to have it. There was a point in time that we didn't even have a trailer. So being able to have something and use it is much better than not having anything at all. All right, well, we are switching vehicles. Daniel is going to drive the Rambler down the mountain, and I'm going to drive the truck down the mountain, um, mostly because I'm more familiar with the truck. And Daniel wants to make sure that this doesn't give us any problems. So that's why we flip-flop cars. So far, so good. Truck's doing good, the Rambler's doing good, and we are chugging up the mountain. Okay, that was a pretty weak light grab up in the tunnel. I'm sorry guys. That was really embarrassing. Oops. I call these the poop de loops. made it off the Smoky Mountains. Now we're fixing to go through Cherokee. It looks like there may be an elk up there that everybody's stopping and staring at. We'll see when we get closer. My eyes are horrible. see them is usually when it's overcast and raining. That's when we see them the most. That one looks like a little young guy. There's a couple chilling out in the field. So we had a deer on our motorcycle and we hit cows in the Jeep. I could not imagine hitting one of these with a vehicle. That would just be tragic. So it looks like some turkeys over there as well. Saw one on the mountain, but couldn't get the camera out in time to get it. We made it to our bathroom stop just off the mountain here in Cherokee. So we didn't get to talk about it, but we actually had three vehicles of ours up here. Um, the blue truck, the Rambler, and then the Monte Carlo, the 86 Monte Carlo. So it does look super rough, but has been five speed swapped. All of the money was spent on the underside. It's got tubular control arms, a Vortec 350, but that is the Monte Carlo. So as you can see, the Rambler's not on the trailer. I'm driving it home. We're gonna see if it'll make it. The truck doesn't have rear brakes. The front works fine, but the rears, I think they're glazed, but it doesn't stop good, so we decided putting the car on the trailer is probably a bad idea, as long as we can help it. 
car's running good. Um, everything's working good. It's not getting hot or anything. The it's got a tire that's got a bubble or something. It. It's hunching down the road. But as long as it don't get any worse, we're gonna keep driving it. We're only a couple hours from home. And if anything gets sketchy, we'll put it on the trailer and be sketchy. Well, this is its longest <coughs> longest drive so far. Yeah, we put right at a hundred miles on it. So it did make it over the mountain which is the hardest part of our journey home so yeah, yeah if they can sit in traffic and then go over the the steep uphill and steep downhills and yeah. you know the car is pretty solid at this point in time yeah we were in traffic for like four hours just yeah. idling yesterday when it was hot so anyway we'll see what happens Fifty-five and sixty, the rear end is growling real bad. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but if I would get in the throttle, it growls loud. You get off and just cruise, it's all right. But as soon as you load it, it's anyway. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but I guess we're gonna keep driving it. I was looking for an excuse to get rid of this closed drive shaft and all that weirdness that's going on back there, so we'll see how it goes. So we've made it to the town with our fuel stop, so we're going to get off the interstate here and grab some fuel. I have noticed one thing about the galley rear end. When I hit bumps, it gets louder. Which makes me think it's something about the drive shaft, U joint or something. So, I'm gonna take some weight out of this thing. I got it loaded slam full. I'm gonna pull some stuff out and put it in the truck and see if we can get some weight out of it. And maybe that will help, because I really don't wanna kill anything. <coughs> so, anyway, we are only an hour or so from home now. So, if anything explodes, I will let y'all know what happened. We're about 15 minutes from home. Everything is still just like it was. Rear end still noisy. Taking a little weight out did let the back of the car come up just a little bit, which did help a little bit. I can run 65 now instead of 60 without knowing like the car is going to shake itself apart. So there's that. <coughs> but I've been thinking, because I don't have a radio in here, I need nothing to do with me. But a lot of people ridicule me for driving these cars, for not going through everything before we drive them. I had a guy online busting at us about why we take these cars out, you know, in traffic and broad runs and stuff without going through all the systems. Well, I went through the brakes, I went through all the safety issues, the fuel system's fresh, and the issue we had was the ignition coil went bad. Well, I think the chances of the original coal from 1964 going bad 
are about equal with that of the one that left the Chinese factory yesterday. <laughs> I run a garage for a living. And I put a lot of parts on that are bad out of the box. Or that work for a couple days and fail. So why would I take working parts off and replace them with new working parts? Because in my opinion, they're, you know, equally as apt to fail. And if it was a suspension component, a ball joint or something, that's a wear item. You know, once it's out of tolerance, it's out of tolerance, you replace it. But something that's not a wear item, like an ignition bolt, or anything else for that matter, I'm not going to go putting new parts on if they're not bad. Because the new parts have just as good of a chance of failing as the old ones. I've, I do it over and over and over. I replace new parts that are bad or replace old parts that are bad. So, just food for thought. You know, I'm not going to go rebuild an entire car and spend thousands of dollars on it when it works. And if it fails to work, then guess what? We'll fix it where we are. Because... <coughs> Anything that you drive, you should be able to fix. If you don't drive old cars, you should be able to repair them. Like, that's part of it. And, I'm of the attitude that, like, I do better work in parking lots than in the shop anyway. Some of my best, like, get you home fixes have been spur of the moment. Like, get you home fixes. Not something I would have ever done in the shop. Anyway, y'all can take all that as you may. But, I mean, the moral of the story is we drive our stuff and we enjoy it and we have fun with it. And I'm going to let a failed car ruin my day. I'm going to replace it and move on the plane. And it is what it is. So I can literally see the house. I'm not sure, like, if Daniel just pulled over or, like, to let that guy over or if he was running out of gas or, like, I don't know. That was really weird. I mean, we're home. We made it. <laughs> Or something. So, we'll see what he has to say in a second. I'm gonna wheel this in here. So, I made it home. We rolled in. It ran out of gas, I think. It was not running when I rolled in the yard. So the Rambler did indeed run out of gas. I rolled in the yard and it ran out. The gauge doesn't work. And I guess it was a little more thirsty than I anticipated. Of course, I did push her pretty hard on the way home. But it's back home, it has gas in it now and I've been driving it around town. I'll say this much. It's not on sale, but it is for sale. If somebody's got enough money. I'm not listing it right now because we're enjoying it. But if you've got enough money and you want a sweet Rambler wagon, it could be yours. And the thought process with that is, um... So I never, I sold my Cadillac to keep this car and this is still my car. It's not a flip car. Um, so it's treated a little bit different because it's my personal car. Uh, but that being said, like he said, if you have deep enough pockets, I could be talked out of it. What I want long-term is I want a 59 Cadillac. Ultimate plan is would love to peel it out from out West, bring it back here because out West you get the super cool patina. Um, stuff is drier out there it doesn't rust as like it does here but i want one in teal or pink preferably she wants a 49 cadillac that looks like this car yeah so that is long-term goals but for now i'm gonna enjoy the rambler and we are gonna fix that rust in the firewall and the rust on the floor and we'll probably dynamat this one we do our like personal cars a little fancier yeah so anyway thank you guys for watching like, subscribe, comment, and we will see you on the next one. See y'all. Hopefully we'll have some more motorcycle content coming up soon. Well, that's our next project is the yeah. Suzuki. We're finishing so, that one. We haven't so. forgot. We've just been busy. Yeah. Let's see what day is it. Oh, it's Thursday. Yeah, it's Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> tell them what you just said about the convertible. No. no I got a good story to tell oh, y'all. Point that junk over here. We were riding by and a convertible came out of the car wash. The top was down, it was all still wet. And Brittany was like, how do you wash a convertible without getting it wet inside? <laughs> and I was like, you know, um, you could put the top up. And she was like, oh yeah, I didn't think about that. <laughs>
See, I was thinking we have crusty cars, and you know, I'd probably just like try to wash around it and not fool with the top. She but. was thinking about the convertibles we've had that haven't had tops. <laughs> yeah. It just shows you the tear of car that we get. <laughs> it's a roadster, not a convertible. <laughs> Peasant. <laughs> 